that Krista gets it, and she's a behavioralist and a dog trainer. Hi, everybody. And she's going to tell you a little bit about the program from her perspective. And if you have any questions for a behavioralist or dog trainer, feel free to ask. This is your chance. Hi, guys. Yeah, so our program is really fun. We get to take shelter dogs from Los Angeles Animal Services and we take them to our kids partners, which is usually Boys and Girls Club, and we get to bring them in and we get to teach the kids how to do obedience. We get to teach the kids how to do agility and then we also teach them things like spay and neuter and we teach them overpopulation and veterinary stuff and how to take care of your old dog and how not to have puppies and what to do if your dog gets sick or lost um, and then we teach them basic behavior and stuff too and then we get to get our shelter dogs out of the shelter and they get to go meet kids and all sorts of people any questions about behavior or our program? So, Krista, often people want to know how to deal with a dog that pulls on a leash. Do you have a, a tip on that? Lots of dogs pull on leash. Yeah, our program, we do everything really positive. We use a lot of treats. Um, but basically, how can I We'll get to that one in a little bit. Um, yeah, but loose leash walking, we teach everybody just to have our dogs focus on us. And we have them be able to walk and orient to handler. A lot of our shelter dogs don't orient very well. Um, so just teaching them to actually focus on us and pay attention. And then when they get to the end of that leash, we just kind of stand still. We have them come into us and we have them focus on us and then we keep walking. So they learn actually that that leash pressure means to back up and come into you. So that's how we try to teach the shelter dogs and all dogs how to do some loose leash walking. How about crate training? How important is crate training and how do you start a dog with crate training? Crate training is actually something we did in our program with our dogs this time. We got to teach them some crate training. Crate training is a great tool because you can start working on potty training and you can take, when you first bring a dog home, you don't want them to have freedom and run of your entire house because they're going to go around and get into trouble and eat your glasses and things like that. So being able to control their freedom, being able to have them in a crate or in a kennel, which is their safe spot. We don't want to, you know, throw them in there and have it be a mean thing. It's, this is a new environment when they're coming from the shelter into your house. So having a crate or something they're familiar with, with some blankets and stuff in it is a great thing. And then you can control potty training and you can control them wanting to destroy, you know, things around your house until you get, uh, you know, a schedule going, which is really good. And there was a question. What was that question? They can't read the question, so if you read that. So how can you discern as a consumer which training, boarding programs, are actual behavior specialists versus basic trainers? So, right, so trainers, hmm, kind of anybody can be a dog trainer. You can hang your shingle out and say, I'm a dog trainer. It's nice if you're an accredited dog trainer, not that a whole bunch of letters after your name mean anything. They do in the sense that I'm an accredited behaviorist. So I'm a certified behaviorist, CBCC, through the Council for Certified Pet Dog Trainers, through the CPDT. So there's a couple different big organizations that will accredit dog trainers. There's CPDT, sorry, it's a little of a confusing thing to explain. There's CPDT and there's IABCC. Those are the big ones where people can be trainer behaviorists. Um, there's also veterinary behaviorists, so that's something totally different. That's somebody that can prescribe medications for your dogs and things like that. So you want them to be a CPDT trainer or an IABCC behaviorist, um, certified as a behaviorist. And then you, not just the, the letters after their name, you want to see who they've worked for, you want to see what kind of dogs they've worked with, you want to see if they've worked with shelter dogs before, if they've worked with working dogs, and if they fit more into your your system um, of doing stuff because not all trainers are the same um, and everybody kind of does stuff differently so it's who you feel feel good with but that's how to know if they're an accredited accredited behaviorist and what, what is sense. your title exactly I'm a certified I'm a CB I'm a certified behavior canine consultant. Gotcha. So I can go to your home and I can work on separation anxiety, aggression, dog-dog aggression, human-dog aggression, um, things like that that are more than just basic training. 
Um, so that's why I'm a certified behaviorist. They're CPDTs, which are certified dog trainers, which a lot of us in our program are also. Um, those are dog trainers. They know a lot too, but they do more just basic obedience and not so much like I, I specialize in reactivity. That's what I like to do. I like to do leash reactivity when you're walking down the street and your dog won't be under control. Um, so that's kind of what I specialize in. But so how can people reach you or connect with you if they want to? Oh, you can reach me at um, Good Sit Dogs at got a bunch of different emails sorry actually you can how about reach your me. instagram what's your instagram my instagram is good sit dogs so it's all one word g-o-o-d-s-i-t-t-d-o-g-s and you can definitely reach me on instagram get a hold of me that way um it's easier than email <laughs> since i don't know my email but yeah there you go so uh yeah and the, what's the biggest question or issue that you deal with as a trainer Leash reactivity. Leash Being reactivity. able to take your dog on a walk um, and have them not react to everything around them. And a lot of that is I have a lot of clients who work really, really hard at leash reactivity. And I have a lot of people who have never taken their dog really on a walk because of the leash reactivity. So it's kind of just the cycle. Like, I don't want to take my dog out because it's barking at everything. But my dog's barking at everything because he never gets to go out. So I work on a lot of leash reactivity. Do you have a tip for the person that's not going to hire a dog trainer, how they can do it at, at home? Yeah, I turned it into a game. So a lot of behavior, there's training and then there's behavior, there's Pavlov, they ring that bell. And so those dogs out there that your dog sees or bells ringing and your dog just gets into the habit of barking at that dog. You have to do something else. So he sees a dog across the street, he comes into you and he either gets you know something awesome like a meatball or a treat or he gets a toy or it has to turn into a game where see he sees a dog and he doesn't want to be reactive. He looks at you and goes, oh, what do I get? What is awesome? I saw a dog. It's kind of like that, that game that you'd play in the car, you know, with people like I spy or whatever. So he sees it and he gets the treat. That's how I like to work on stuff and do everything positive and have really good relationships with your dog in the beginning. And what cities do you work out of? I kind of work out of everywhere because I'm a certified behaviorist and there aren't too many of us. So I am basically in Hollywood, um, but I work in, I go as far as Riverside, I go down to Orange County. So it just kind of depends like on your issue and what's going on. And I have classes every Saturday. I have a Saturday social that's open to people with fosters, that's open to my clients, it's kind of open to anybody, where we just go, we meet in Southgate and we do a big group walk for dogs that need to get out and see stuff. We see horses, we see other dogs, we see all sorts of stuff. I didn't know about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Downtown Dog Rescue shows up a lot. Oh, that's awesome. Lots of really yeah. All right, so we're here with Krista Goodsit and we're here with Canine Youth Alliance at Eagle Rock Brewery and they're here till three. They've had one dog adopted. One dog adopted already. Do you want to tell me a little bit about who was adopted? Yeah, we got Sledgehammer, I think. I haven't heard officially, but I think Sledgehammer, one of our younger, really um, awesome dogs that was at our last program, he learned a bunch of stuff. He learned how to go in his crate. He learned all sorts of manners. So hopefully he's going home with the owner, I think, of Eagle Rock Brewery. So he's hopefully going to be a brewery dog, and they're excited to take him adventuring. And That's what they I want heard. They want to take him hiking and all sorts of stuff. And so, so there's... Like Four, four other dogs here right now. Can you just give me a bullet point on each one of those dogs? Yeah. I actually know them very well, but... Yeah, we've got Howie over there. He's a nice kind of round middle age. Everybody loves him because he's just kind of sitting and chilling under under all the tables, and he's been awesome with everybody. We have Miss Blanca, his girlfriend. They were voted most likely to get married in our program. Um, I don't know how old Blanc is, but she came into she came into our program like the last couple days and just picked everything up. And she's just the sweetest, nicest dog on the planet. That's a Blanca. We also have Polly Pocket here, who is our Velvet Hippo, one of our big old. She would be one of our favorite dogs to have in our kids program. So we're starting a kids program soon. If she's still in the shelter, she'll be in our kids program. She's amazing. So if someone volunteers, they're under your watch, right? Yeah, so if you volunteer for K-9, um, you get to come in and work with, you have a dog and you have a kid that we assign you to during the day, and then you get to be an actual mentor and help learn them how to train and how to work with their dog. So it's a good way for people to increase their own dog IQ by volunteering. Yeah, yeah. and hopefully we'll have more of the dog programs, and because we our last program we didn't have our kids, we just had dog handlers, and I got to train all the handlers. 
and they all did great. Amy watched the dogs coming in. Yep, Still got doing dogs my dog coming time, in, everybody. All around. <laughs> Most of our dogs here, I think everybody's dog friendly right now. I believe so, yeah. And then one last question we'll take. What do you do if you're walking your dog and out of nowhere a pit bull comes and charges at my dog and me? Yeah, that happens a lot. Any kind of dog. I got charged. My scariest, well, my scariest was I got charged by a Rottweiler. That was scary. My really scary one was two little wiener dogs because they can be crazy aggressive too. I do a lot of defensive kind of stuff. I like to keep my leash tight. I tuck my dog. I can show you. Kind of have him here. I tuck him behind my knee and I turn my body and I go this way. And I go, get your dog, get your dog. And I try to get myself away so that they can get their dog. But I try to keep my dog tucked in away. And I try to kind of kick at that dog and get it away from me. I yell um, and I look for the owner. And I try to tuck in somewhere. So you get try away. to create space between your dog and their dog uh, using your body as a shield almost. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. Yeah. I'm trying to stop them from grabbing my dog and them engaging and having that fight. And usually, unless you just get charged and that dog grabs right on, they'll do like a circle kind of thing. If you can keep it moving and circle around and, and give them time to hopefully get their dog or find someone going by, usually that's how my Rottweiler, how they grab the Rottweiler off of me. Now, do you believe in carrying something like an air horn or a whistle or citronella spray? Yeah, if you're in an area where that's happening a lot, citronella spray is fine. I know people that carry sticks, you know, too. It's like there's a lot of areas where there are a lot of off-leash dogs, and that's a concern. So if that's something that's going on in your area, um, even, you know, treats, you can throw treats and stuff and scatter, and some dogs will be like, oh, oh. Um, but yeah, I usually just try to create space. So I think, uh, like at the shelter, we have things that pop up all the time, and we know that at some point in time, things will happen. And so if you have an area where it may happen, then you just need to be ahead of the situation by carrying something to prep yourself for it. Would, that, would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if you can't avoid that area, I have a lot of clients who can't avoid. There's just off-leash dogs everywhere. So being prepared is the best way to kind of get away from that. But yeah, and, and being defensive. I, I try a lot of people... When they see an off-leash dog running up to them, they drop that. They kind of drop their leash, and everybody stares, and then it's like on. I like to kind of turn and go the other way and just get myself out of that situation and keep stuff moving. Dogs like to look at each other and kind of lock up. and uh, So if I can kind of like keep my dog's head away from the dog's head and be like, okay, buddy, what's up, what's up, and then get myself out of there, that's how I try to do it. We're at Evil Rock Brewery. We're here until 3 o'clock. Uh, Canine Youth Alliance has four dogs right now that are available for adoption. They're going fast. Uh, they're going fast. You can meet the trainers. You can meet a, a Krista, who's a behavioralist. You can meet the people who organize the program. I'll be here for this much more beer, uh, and then I'm out of here. But, uh, yeah, you can meet the dogs, and uh, I will now take you to meet some of those dogs. Thanks, Krista. Thanks, guys. Tell them Come once on again, one more time, your Instagram if they want to look like you up. Good sit dogs. G O O D S I T T D O G S. Thanks, Krista. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. All right, I hope you all appreciated that. I'm going to show you some of the dogs before I sign off. This over here.